it's mock draft season because the New Orleans Saints playoff hopes are pretty much gone. So in today's show, I'm going to go through my first seven round mock draft. You guys, you could call it mock draft 1.0. We're not doing any trades. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I just wanted to go through all seven rounds of the New Orleans Saints selections. And right now, as it stands, the Saints currently have the number 10 overall selection. So the loss to the uh, or this loss past week, the loss this past week to the Rams, I should say, did not move them up or down. But then when the Browns and Broncos Monday Night Football finished, they ended up moving up. So they were number nine. Now they're number ten. But hey, it's mock draft season, and if you want the Saints to crush this upcoming draft, I need you to do one thing for me, and that's hit the thumbs up icon. Like today's video, I don't want to jinx a damn thing, so hit that thumbs up icon, and let's. Get this party started. Mock Draft 1.0 starts off when round one, number 10 overall. I'm going wide receiver, Luther Burden out of Mizzou. He is a phenomenal wide receiver. He's very, very dynamic at 5 foot 11, 208 pounds. He has excellent burst. He has phenomenal strength, not just when it comes to catching a football, but also breaking tackles. He has a lot of special teams value as well because he can contribute as a punt returner, and he's just very versatile. You can line him up in the slot, and that's where he does get most of his work, and he can make plays, whether it's a quick pass on a screen, whether it's a quick slant, or if you want him to go downfield and make a play for the deep pass Luther Burden is your guy now in terms of the production this season for the Mizzou Tigers he put up 61 catches 676 yards six touchdowns and over 11 yards per catch he's a good wide receiver he is a speedy complement and I think that he could be a good complement to Rashid Shaheed and to Chris Olave just overall I think he's a good offensive weapon and the Saints need somebody who is dynamic and lethal with the ball in their hands because we obviously know that Rashid Shahid's is really good at the deep ball. We obviously know that Chris Olave is a talented wide receiver. But we need somebody for yards after catch. And we need somebody who's just dynamic and can be a playmaker just all around. And on top of that, he does have some rushing ability. He also uh, was able to do some good things for the Mizzou Tigers in the rushing game as well. But I think Luther Burden would be an excellent addition for the New Orleans Saints. Let's go to round two. Selection number 41 overall, I'm beefing up the trenches on the defensive tackle. Kenneth Grant, the Michigan Wolverine, he is a player I'm really, really excited about. Now, he isn't much of a pass rusher. He's a lot better as a run stopper, but he does have nice size and strength that I think could translate well to the NFL level. He takes on blocks really, really well. He has good hand usage, and he is good gap filler, uh, or he is a good gap filler against the run. Six foot three, 339 pounds. I mean, the dude is a unit, and when it comes to this Saints defensive line, I think that he is a player that could be excellent in this group. Nathan Shepard, Colin Saunders, John Ridgway, Christian Boyd, and Brian Brzee are the current defensive tackles on the depth chart. And I just think when it comes down to it, Kenneth Grant could add the run-stopping ability. We know that the Saints struggle against the run, and I think that he could do a good job of helping supplement all of that. Again, not much of a pass rusher. He was able to get three sacks, seven tackles for loss, and 18 tackles for the Michigan Wolverines this past season. So maybe Kenneth Grant could be a good selection in round two. But if you want us to do more Saints mock drafts, let us know by hitting that sub button. If we get a lot of subscribers on this video, then I know every single week, might as well put out a mock draft. So hit that sub button, lock us in if you want daily Saints videos, not just around the draft, but we go live on game day. We do all sorts of news, rumors, injury report coverage, everything you need to know during the season and in the offseason as a Saints fan. So hit that sub button because we are your one-stop shop for anything black and gold. Now let's go into round three. The Saints, I have them selecting cornerback Denzel Burke. And, you know, why would I not want to take an Ohio State cornerback? Feels like it's worked out in the past, right? So with Denzel Burke, he is a player that has really good length and really good size for the National Football League, standing at six foot one, 193 pounds. Mostly he lines up on the outside, but you can have him line up in the box or in the slot, and I do think that he could be a good player long-term for the New Orleans Saints. He does gamble a little bit when it comes to playing the football, and that's, you know, one thing that's high risk, high reward. You either go and get the pick, you get the PBU, or you get burned. And one thing I really love about him, it, Denzel Burke is a strong run defender. He's not afraid of contact. He's going to seek it out like a heat-seeking missile, and he's going to make the play. And I will say this, feels like the Saints have a good history with Ohio State cornerbacks. Last time they did this, although he got traded away, let's say it worked out. Just saying, I think it worked out pretty well. And when it comes to 
this fit with New Orleans. I think it makes sense to have Elante Taylor move back into the slot because I think he is extremely effective in the slot. I like him being a pass rusher. I like him getting active every single play. But I think you could have Kool-Aid McKinstry and Burke line up on the outsides, and then you send Elante Taylor back to the slot. Denzel Burke, I think, could be an interesting selection for the New Orleans Saints in round three. And, of course, the Saints have a second, third round selection thanks to the uh, Washington Commanders and that Marshawn Lattimore trade. I'm going to tell you what that pick is here in just a moment and all the other picks that the Saints selected in my Mock Draft 1.0. But first, fellas, it, it's holiday season. I know you're trying to upgrade your wardrobe. I know you got plans. And if you're anything like me, this past week for Thanksgiving, I was struggling trying to find something to wear to dinner when I was meeting up with Maddie and her family. And Public Rec, I'll tell you what, they got me feeling real nicey rocking their gear. The holidays, like I mentioned, are right around the corner, and I know you're in the market for something that looks great and fits even better. Because like I said a bit ago, it's my exact situation. I'm one of the guys, and I want you to be suited up with Public Rec. I'm going to be rocking Public Rec at my family holiday festivities, and you should too. Whether you're kicking back with a holiday movie, making your way through leftovers, or you're watching bowl games with the fellas, these pants have you covered. Heck, they'll even keep you looking sharp for that awkward holiday party with your in-laws, if you know what I'm saying. And Public Rec not only has the most comfortable pants ever made, but they have a huge selection of high-quality everyday basics. And you can revamp your entire wardrobe with their perfect fitting polos, shorts, and hoodies. The Public Rec, or Public Rec is just an amazing product. I think that this shirt that I'm rocking right here is absolutely sick. It's stretchy, it's comfortable, Look at that, fellas. No pit stains. Not a damn thing. Because this shirt is cool, it's breathable, it's so comfy, and honestly, I wish you could feel it through the screen. It's soft, man. It's like a nice, athletic, soft material. Better than any uh, anything that, that you can get at, like, Dick Sporting Goods or Academy, if you ask me. So go get yourself some gear from Public Rec and stop suffering in regular pants and give the gift of comfort this holiday season. For a limited time only, our listeners get 20% off when you use code CHAT20 at checkout. That's 20% off with code CHAT20 at publicrec.com. After you purchase your items, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that Saints Now sent you. Say goodbye to pants that put up a fight because when comfort meets style, you have found Public Rec. We talked about comfort, but let's make opposing quarterbacks a little uncomfortable. How about Ashton Gelotti or Gelati out of Louisville? The edge rusher is a player that I think the Saints could greatly benefit from bringing in because he is really, really good against the run. And you'll notice when it comes to some of these defensive players, they're really good at stopping the run. And that's something that I was trying to focus on because the Saints just suck at stopping the run. This year, it's just been an absolute joke. And it's honestly been a problem for the past couple of seasons. But he does have really good pass rush moves. And he continues to get better over time as a pass rusher. But he's really, really effective against the run. You see that by his stats. 23 tackles, 10 of those for a loss. And he has four and a half sacks on the season. And for Gelodi specifically, I really like the versatility that he can offer, not just as a pass rusher because he can be effective there, but I also think as a run stopper, that's something that's very valuable, and the Saints need that. I said it before, I'll say it again. The Saints need to be better at stopping the run, and I think that this is an excellent selection to help do just that. Now let's talk about RJ Maryland, the tight end out of SMU. And I will add this. He tore his ACL in October for the SMU Mustang. So he's been out for some time, but don't get it twisted. RJ Maryland is a phenomenal football player. He stands at six foot four, 233 pounds. He has a really nice athletic upside and really good receiving instincts with reliable and strong hands at the point of catch. Not much of a blocker. He's not going to do a lot in that front. He can improve a lot in that regard. And he can also get better as a route runner. But in case that name looks a little familiar, well, Russell Maryland, former first-round pick out of Miami. Is that correct, Coop? Yeah, out of Miami. Yeah, that's his dad. So good genes, I would say. In 2024, again, limited action because he tore his ACL in October. But he still had it 15 yards per catch and four touchdowns in 2023. 34 catches for 518 yards, 15.2 yards per catch, and seven touchdowns for the SMU Mustangs. I think this could be an excellent selection to beef up the tight end room. Obviously, Taysom Hill, he's out for the rest of the season this year. I think that that's an injury that's going to linger early into next season. So maybe RJ Maryland is a player that can give you a true tight end next to Juwan Johnson, next to Foster Morrow, Dallin Holker, and you know one of those guys. Maybe they're not on the roster next season. So R.J. Maryland, I think tight end is a need, and I think he's a good selection. 
Let's talk about maybe my favorite pick in this mock draft, Cam Skedaboo, the wide, or not the wide receiver, the running back out of Arizona State. The Sun Devil runs like a freaking Mack truck. He is a battering ram at 5'11", 215 pounds. Guys, I'm telling you right now, turn on the tape. Just turn on the tape. This is a classic instance of he, got, he has the good production, he has all the abilities, and on top of that, the, he passes the eye test. I mean, he moves north and south so well. He has the lateral quickness to be able to make defenders miss. And on top of that, he just runs through an MFer's face. Shout out to Marshawn Lynch. I'll tell you what, you watch two minutes of his highlights, you will be absolutely sold on this kid. He is very, very talented. I think he would be an excellent addition to the Saints running back group because when it comes down to it, you could have Alvin Kamara, Kendra Miller, and Cam Skedaboo. I don't think that Jamal Williams is part of the long-term future for the New Orleans Saints, but I think that this running back group right here, Alvin Kamara being the lead guy, Kendra Miller, What's he capable of doing? What's he going to do when he's healthy? That's a lot of thing, questions, and there's the jury still out on there. But Cam Skedaboo also is a really talented player who can do it all. He can catch the pass, he can run the football, and he's damn reliable at it. 19 total touchdowns, 17 on the ground, two through the air. This guy is really, really good. So if this was the Saints running back room, how would you rate it? One through 100. One meaning it's absolutely terrible. 100 meaning it's the best running back group you've ever seen. Now let's talk about Lathan Ransom, a sixth-round pick that I have the Saints taking in my mock draft, the safety out of Ohio State. You know, again, I'll go back to it. There's a good pipeline between the New Orleans Saints and Ohio State Buckeyes, and I'm just going to keep running it as long as they fill draft needs for me. And with uh, Lathan Ransom, he is a big and physical safety, and I really, really like that about him because he can also play at all three levels. Whether you want him playing deep, whether you want him playing in the box, he can play anywhere on the field. He is a really, really good run defender, and he's actually a run defender first, but he also has the ability to cover deep. So again, it goes back to players who can help stop the run, but can also contribute in other facets of the game. And I think that Lathan Ransom would be an excellent selection to do that, especially in the sixth round. Feels like a steal when you get him in that late. Now let's go to the last selection for the New Orleans Saints. They don't have a seventh round pick right now. And I know a lot of y'all are laughing at me, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. KJ Jefferson, I watched him a lot at Arkansas. I was a student whenever he was the starting quarterback for the Razorbacks. I'll tell you what, man, he is electric to watch. And although he was benched at UCF, it didn't work out. He got benched for a true freshman. Is Richard or a true freshman? He got benched for a freshman, not in either, in either way. But I think that when it comes down to him, he's not a quarterback. I, I don't want him throwing the pill. I want him running the freaking football because he's a big-bodied guy. He is really, really hard to tackle. Nick Saban even saying at his time coaching in Alabama that he's one of the more impressive runners of the football in his time as a coach. I think if you use him like a Taysom Hill, he could be absolutely electric. 584 carries, over 2,000 yards, 24 touchdowns on the ground. I think K.J. Jefferson, again, this is not a pick of, oh, my God, this would change the game, but... You know, if you wanted somebody to maybe be a little Taysom Hill, you got a big body guy. He's really hard to take down. He's not as fast as Taysom. I'm not saying it's going to be, you know, apples to apples, but apples to oranges maybe? Who knows? I think it'd be a pretty fun little addition to the Saints. And again, I did go to Arkansas, so maybe a little bit is, is a, of that is a, I'm a little biased. And, you know, it'd be fun to see a ra former Razorback on the Saints. Now, here is my full mock draft. Remember, we started off with Luther Burden, and then went Kenneth Grant, Denzel Burke, Ashton Jalodi, RJ Maryland, Cam Skedaboo, Lathan Ransom, Jay Higgins. We forgot to mention him. He's a linebacker out of Iowa, and that's on me because I didn't get to give you a full breakdown of who he was. Jay Higgins, let me tell you about him. He is a old-school linebacker. He is a hard-hitting son of a gun. He can play in coverage, but I think that if you were able to get him late in the draft, he would be an excellent addition, and he could be a good predecessor to the DeMario Davises of the world. The Saints obviously drafted Jalen Ford last year. I'm so sorry I forgot to build a couple graphics for Jay Higgins, but I'll tell you what, turn on some tape, watch his highlights. He's a really, really good football player, and I'll tell you what, if he's coming out of Iowa Feels like they've been producing some good talent in the National Football League. So one more time, here is my mock draft. Grade it for me, A, B, C, D, or F. And Saints fans, be sure to subscribe if you want us to do some more of this type of content. We will see y'all next time. Y'all stay golden. Thank you so much for supporting the program. We'll see you next time.